Hello, and welcome back, Astro Kids. Welcome if you are watching this on YouTube or if you are watching this on Patreon. For those of you who are on YouTube, I do have this available on Patreon if you would like to support me as a patron. This is the August 2019 horoscope for the sign Gemini. And let me just show you the cards. So I already have cards laid out for the month of September. So this will give you a sneak peek at the month of September. And I will go over the transits as I am drawing the cards. I am using the Connolly Tarot deck, the Rider Tarot deck, the Barbie Airy Zodiac Oracle deck, and playing cards. So I will be drawing from these four decks. And looking at the transits for August, there isn't much going on compared to last month. So this is looking at a much lighter month in August. Things are kind of more relaxed and light and fun, giving you a little bit of a break compared to this heavier energy that we had with the eclipse season in July and on top of that Mercury in retrograde. And so we start off the month of August with a new moon in Leo on August 1st. And this new moon is really the ending for this lunar eclipse season. Yes, we did end it with the full moon partial lunar eclipse in Capricorn. However, we still are sort of going through the aftermath of this eclipse season. And the new moon in Leo on August 1st is sort of that doorway that ends the eclipse season. It gives you a portal to a fresh new start. So this new moon really brings happiness and joy into your life. It really gives you the opportunity to allow yourself to be truly happy, to be your truest, most authentic self. So take advantage of this new moon in Leo on August 1st. Allow yourself to be happy and true to yourself. Now, August 2nd through August 4th, we have the moon moving into Virgo and when the moon moves into Virgo there is sort of this lack of emotion there is emotional intelligence but there is a lack of emotion and as we move into moon and Virgo things become more practical this sort of gives you the ability to really look over the details and analyze things and really Find those areas to organize and to be more practical in your life. For some of you, you may feel the need to do some cleaning or organizing around the house. You may have some paperwork or some chores that need to be done. And this really gives you that feeling of wanting to get things done or wanting to fix things or make things better. Now on August 4th through August 6th, the moon moves into Libra. And this is where we really feel the need to find balance in our lives. And so if there's anything at all that is out of balance or that is 
in disharmony in your life, this is where you will start to kind of find the balance. This really gives you a different mental picture. And also this does affect relationships. So you may feel the need to negotiate or make compromises or find a way to find peace and balance in your relationships. Now, August 6th through August 8th, the moon moves into Scorpio. And the moon does not really enjoy being in Scorpio. This is the fallen position. This is where the moon falls asleep and doesn't work as well. And part of this is because the moon is emotional. The moon deals with our feelings. It is the unconscious part of ourselves. And so when the moon moves into Scorpio, it really brings up some fears or some unresolved feelings. Really brings up some deep desires. Scorpio deals with transformation, and so we are sort of forced to deal with the darker parts of ourselves. We're forced to release and go through some deaths of the old things that no longer serve us, and the things that are hidden or deep within our bodies. Scorpio really takes us deep within our bodies into what we are truly feeling on the deepest level. And so when the moon moves into Scorpio, this puts us in a position of death and rebirth, of transformation. We have these feelings that we must work on, right? We have these deeper issues that must be uncovered so that these old things can die off and we can be reborn. Now, August 8th through August 10th, the moon moves into Sagittarius. And this is where the intensity of Scorpio sort of dies off a bit. Sagittarius is a little more fun, a little more adventurous philosophical when the moon moves into Sagittarius this is where we really try to find understanding and higher truths and wisdom in our lives and I got a card in reverse so let me Pull another card to get some clarity on that. Now, on August 11th, we have quite a bit happening. We have Jupiter coming direct. Which, if you were unaware, Jupiter was retrograde in its home sign of Sagittarius. And so it comes direct in its home sign of Sagittarius on August 11th. And this is great energy. This really takes us out of observational mode. And it really opens up a doorway to blessings and good fortunes in our lives. It also opens up a doorway for experience and gaining wisdom and philosophy. And so a lot of us, whether it is good or bad, we have these lessons and these experiences that we must go through. And this is what Jupiter is pushing for us to go through. Right? Jupiter grows and expands in our lives. It gives us opportunities through lessons and challenges. Also on the same day, we have Mercury entering Leo. 
which if you didn't know this, Mercury did retrograde. I believe it was July 7th when Mercury went retrograde at 4 degrees Leo. And it is now retrograde in Cancer. And so when it comes direct, it'll be very, very late on July 31st. So we start off the month of August with Mercury direct in Cancer. And so all of you who were having issues with technology and miscommunications, misunderstandings, car troubles, that sort of comes to an end. Also, when Mercury was retrograde in Leo, there was some issues with speaking out too boldly or being confrontational. Also in Cancer, there was sort of this level of shyness or harshness in the way that we communicated. And so we sort of come out of that. And so when Mercury came direct in Cancer, we started to become more compassionate, more emotional, in the way that we spoke. Now when Mercury comes direct in Leo, and we've had Mercury direct in Leo before, early in the month of July, so we've experienced this before, so what will happen is we will have this confidence in the way that we speak. We will speak more boldly, communication will be more expressive, more out there, in Cancer, it was a bit more private. And so there's this confidence or this boldness in the way that we speak. Just a moment. Now, also on the same day, Uranus stations retrograde. And Uranus, if you were unaware, is in Taurus. So this is a generational revolution of Uranus and Taurus that we are currently in. So if anyone were born right now, Uranus and Taurus would affect them generationally speaking. Now when Uranus retrogrades, it creates this chaos, this confusion. It sort of comes in with the tower moment of tearing things down, breakthroughs, revolutions. So Uranus itself is about revolution and change. But when it moves into retrograde, it kind of forces the change. It becomes very destructive and starts breaking down things that no longer serve us. Also, you may feel as though answers may not come as easily to you. Now, with Uranus being in retrograde in Taurus, this is dealing with our values. This is dealing with our possessions, the things that we love, the things that bring stability into our lives, right? Our finances, the home, comfort and stability. Also on August 11th, and this goes through August 13th, the moon moves into Capricorn. And the moon 
does not like being in Capricorn. This is a detrimental position for the moon. Here the moon sort of lacks feeling. When we talk about Capricorn, we are talking about this drive. this ambition, this goal setting to achieve, to climb the mountain, to success. We're talking about status. So Capricorn is a very hardworking, disciplined sign. Therefore, there's this attack, this detachment or lack of emotion. Now, what this moon in Capricorn does for us is it does give us the drive to focus on our goals and achieving our goals. And this is great if you had plans during Mercury and Retrograde that sort of went awry. This actually gives you the drive and the ambition to, to pick back up on these plans that you've had. Now, from August 14th through 15th, the moon is in Aquarius, but on August 15th, we have a full moon in Aquarius. And so as the moon goes into Aquarius, this is also very detached and emotionless, but for a different reason. Aquarius is very innovative and intelligent. And so the focus is really mental, social. Aquarius is the humanitarian, so this does deal with groups and friendships. And so when the moon moves into Aquarius, you will see that, especially with this Uranus and retrograde, this is much needed of bringing some answers and some clarity into our lives. You will see some breakthroughs. You will see things happen unexpectedly in your favor. Especially with this full moon in Aquarius. And as you may know, on a full moon, you want to be open and receptive. You want to allow things to flow and allow yourself to receive the abundance. Allow yourself to let go of things that no longer serve you. Now, from August 16th through 18th, the moon moves into Pisces. And as the moon moves into Pisces, there does tend to be this confusion. We can easily get lost if we try to overanalyze or stick to thinking things out. Really, when the moon moves into Pisces, you want to feel things out and trust in your intuition. And it really puts us in this position, this position to feel, to imagine, to dream. And so things tend to be a bit foggy when we get stuck in our minds in this position. So it's best to try to feel things out and to trust in your intuition. Now on August 18th, Mars enters Virgo. And this is a great position. Mars in Virgo gives us this drive this focus, this passion. To work on our goals. To work on staying practical and hardworking.
So if you have any schedules or routines that you follow, any chores or projects that need to get done, this is a great energy for it. Now, August 21st through 23rd, the moon moves in. I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead. On August 19th, Jupiter makes aspects with Saturn. And we've seen this before several times. So Jupiter gives us the ability to dream and experience and gain wisdom and knowledge. And so with it making aspects to Saturn, which is disciplined and deals with rules and regulations, this sort of hits us with reality on our dreams. On our visions we really get to see if the things that we want to achieve are really realistic are truly attainable now August 19th through 20th the moon moves into Aries and this really lights us up with passion You may feel very active. You may feel the need to get up and do something in your lives. As the moon moves into Aries, we become very lively. Now on August 21st, Venus enters Virgo, and Venus does not like being in Virgo. This is the fallen position. So Venus sort of falls, of, falls asleep and does not work as well in Virgo. And this is because Venus is dealing with love and values and romance and imagination and beauty and Virgo hits us with structure routines reality and so this does affect relationships you want to be careful that you are not being overly critical over analyzing things. On the other hand, this does give you the ability to work on any issues within your relationships. As Virgo does give you the ability to see the problem areas, the areas that need to be fixed and improved. Now, August 21st, through August 23rd, the moon moves into Taurus. And the moon loves being in Taurus. The moon is exalted in Taurus. And so the moon is fully energized in Taurus. It is in its full power. And this is because the moon is emotional. It seeks stability. And Taurus gives it the comfort, the stability.
And so this can really be a time where you feel safe and comfortable in expressing your feelings. It can also be a great time to really relax and focus on the present moment. Now on August 23rd, we enter Virgo season. So as the sun moves into Virgo, the passion, the romance, the excitement of Leo sort of dies down and things become more grounded, more structured. things really start to calm down more in our lives. We're really faced with the reality and the routines that we need to follow through with. And August 23rd through August 25th, the moon enters Gemini. And the moon in Gemini really makes us feel more connected. We want to start interacting more in our immediate environment. Although Gemini does lack emotion. And so this connection is more surface level. It is more so dealing with intellect and communication. And it doesn't really become as emotional and empathetic until we move into Moon and Cancer, which is August 25th through August 27th. And the moon is at home in Cancer. And so this is where you will see people becoming more emotional and compassionate. And it's really a great time to focus on how you can nurture yourself and others. And August 28th through August 29th, the moon moves into Leo. Where you might want to have fun. Want to show off, be the center of attention things really start to become more light and dramatic and romantic and exciting. Now, August 29th through August 31st, the moon will be in Virgo. But on August 30th is when we have the new moon in Virgo. And this new moon will be a great follow-up portal to the full moon in Aquarius. That we had earlier in the month. As we have received the clarity and the answers that we need.
the new moon in Virgo then opens up a portal or a gateway for you to make the necessary improvements in your life. And that is the month of August. So not much really is happening in the month of August compared to the month of July. July was very intense with this Mercury in retrograde on top of the eclipse season. And so the month of August sort of gives you a break from the intensity it really is more laid back. All right. So first of all, we have the sun. And it's interesting because we see the sun again later on. And so there is this sort of start for you, Gemini, for the month of August of really being happy and true to yourself. I see a lot of you really taking this month of August with a more light and fun approach. Now, there seems to be a lack of imagination or a lack of dreams or visions. And this sort of removes the illusion or the confusion of any situations that you have been in. However, if there is a situation where you need to be more creative and imaginative, to create the dream or vision that you want. There's sort of this lack in that department. You also seem to be ending old structures or systems in your life. And so there is sort of this void when it comes to being disciplined and consistent. We're really not seeing a follow through in achieving your visions or dreams that you have. And a lot of this is because again, You are focused on what feels good. You are focused on the beauty, on the joy, the pleasure that this month of August is starting off for you. Now this does call you to be more loving, more compassionate, more connected in your feelings. We also see a lack of acceptance to some degree. There is this feeling of not really accepting or acting on 
what is really being offered to you. And this almost feels like there is a lack of passion or drive in this department. It really feels like you just want things to be easy and light this month. After this journey that you have been through with Mercury retrograde in the eclipse season. Now, as far as your thoughts or the way that you are perceiving things, there does seem to be these old thought patterns or these old ways of perceiving things that you are holding on to. And again, a lack of actually being realistic and practical and physically doing things. So again, I'm feeling this lack of discipline or drive when it comes to your goals. Yes, it definitely feels like there is this opening or portal to you for success or achievement. But it seems a lot of you do not want to move in this direction. There's something that you are holding on to. There's a lack of discipline, a lack of drive. And it's almost as if with the Three of Pentacles, you are afraid of this achievement or success at the end of this. Again, it seems as if you want things to be light and easy. You're not really showing the discipline or drive to achieve your goals. And it seems like you are constricted Or controlled by something from the past. Again, there is this feeling of wanting to hold on to old thought patterns or old belief systems. It looks as if there's a fear of the future, a fear of achieving your goals. And we have the sun card again repeating itself. So it seems that there is this desire to just want things to be light and fun and happy. A lot of you just want happiness. You just want to feel joy. You don't want to go through the pain through the hard work. To get to that achievement, that success at the end of it. It 
And again, here we see almost this block. in your inner guidance. This block or this resistance to receiving the information that will help you bring this to an end, bring this to a completion. And we have the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. And so there is this feeling of things not going in your favor. And a lot of this is because you want the easy way. You want things to be light and joyful. When really this is a time for you to make some necessary changes, to do some necessary work in your life. And this month of August is a perfect time for that as we're off of these intense energies of Mercury in retrograde, the eclipse season, and even Jupiter retrograde. So really, Gemini, you should be taking advantage of this time by doing the work that's necessary. You have this opening or this doorway to success that you are sort of holding yourself back from or blocking yourself from. And with the nine of pentacles in reverse, again, nine dealing with change or transformation, right? Nine is, nine is the end, the ending, the death. A lot of you are afraid of this. A lot of you are afraid to go through this death and regeneration. Now we're dealing with the nine of pentacles though. So there is this abundance, this success, this completion at the end of this. So a lot of you are blocking yourselves from actually achieving your goals and achieving even more. There's abundance for you. And look at this, we end with the same exact card, the Three of Pentacles. So this excess, this success, this achievement that you are blocking yourself from, this abundance. And again, we talked a lot about change, transformation. And this is the nine of hearts. This is emotional. This is your feelings. You have these old feelings. These old desires. these old emotions and this is very scorpionic this is deep right this is 
things that you're trying to hide or run from. Right, you're not facing these feelings that need to change, that need to be addressed. And for some of you, this even deals with needing to grow within your relationships. A lot of you don't want to go through this growth process, through this transformation. And we see nine again. So again, this transformation. And this time we're dealing with spades, your thoughts. Right, and we talked about this before, you need to change your mindset, change your belief system. For a lot of you, A lot of you have some work to do to evolve and grow your mind. A lot of you are stuck in old thoughts, old beliefs. Some of you need to change the way that you communicate as well. Some of, some of you aren't communicating and this is the area that needs to grow, to transform, to evolve. And again, the ace is here, the ace of spades. So new beginning, new thoughts, fresh new thoughts for a lot of you. you need to change your mindset. Change the way that you think. Make it more positive. for this will help you grow. And it's interesting that we had a few extra cards come out and we see this synchronicity of five. Right, five dealing with the challenges that a lot of you are trying to avoid. Part of this transformation that you must go through. And we have the five of spades here dealing with negative thoughts, dealing with self-defeating thoughts. Right, again, there is these things that it almost feels like you are trying to hide or avoid that has to be faced, has to be addressed. This month of August can't be a light and fun month for you. You have work to do on yourself. And when you get through that work, there's plenty room for happiness and more abundance. So 
So this is a challenge that you must go through. Only if you're willing though, right? A lot of you are not willing to do the necessary work. A lot of you feel stuck. Tied down to the physical. Tied down to work. Tied down to responsibility. And so what does Gemini do when Gemini feels tied down? runs, right? But for a lot of you, you actually have to face this. And a lot of this has to do with change. A lot of you, you feel tied down to these situations because they're not the situations that you should be in. And the answer is not trying to make things light and fun. The answer is actually doing the work and going through the changes that are necessary to move you into a different space. Again, the ace of spades confirms that. That you need to start fresh. You need to put yourself in a place that puts you in a positive mindset. Transformation. And for some of you, not only are we talking about thoughts, but this is your feelings. A lot of you don't feel good. You have these negative feelings. Or you're in these negative relationships that don't serve you. Or you don't want to face these darker feelings. For a lot of you, you're trying to escape. You're trying to run, to avoid. But again, you must face this. This is transformation that you must go through. These are challenges that you must face. Again, the synchronicities are not a coincidence. With the nines and the fives, we see this. even with the spades and the hearts. For a lot of you, are disconnected from feeling. We're detaching the head from the heart. A lot of you have these negative thought patterns that need to be worked through. There's some change, some work that needs to be done. And the Six of Spades is here again, as we talked about with the Five, I'm sorry, with the Ace of Spades, that you need this new beginning, these positive thoughts. You need to put your mind in a place of peace and harmony. I'm feeling this lack of harmony. this negativity or this dis-ease that is happening in the situations that you are in, there's this change that needs to happen for a lot of you.
And because of this change that needs to happen, for some of you, you are even making these negative decisions, these negative choices. There's negative behavior or actions occurring, right? A lot of you even aren't using your creativity or your imagination. And we saw that in the beginning, right, with Neptune in reverse. A lot of you are blocking your creativity, your passion, your expression, that fire part of you, you're blocking. Right, you're not taking action. You want it to be easy and light to get out of this situation that is constricting or tying you down. But that is not the answer. You must do the work and make the changes to fully remove yourself from the situation and put yourself in a situation that is better suited for you. And we end this with a reminder that there can be completion. There can be an end to these negative feelings or thoughts, to this disruption, to this place of unhappiness or dis-ease. Notice dis-ease and disease, right? A lot of you want to avoid getting sick by remaining in these situations that don't serve you. A lot of you need to remove yourselves from these situations because it is not good for your mental physical or spiritual health. A lot of you need to remove yourselves from these situations. This is a new ending or completion. Leading to a new beginning. And this doorway is open for you. But a lot of you need to make your way through this doorway. Now, looking at the month of September, we start off with Aquarius, and so there is this change, this revolution. For a lot of you, I do see that if you go through with this transformation, this puts you in a place of being your true authentic self of being your unique self, of walking in a place that truly serves you. And that's what a lot of you need to do. A lot of you are in situations that need to change. For some of that, for some of you that means communicating for some of that for some of you that means removing yourself for some of you that means starting fresh but there is this situation that has to change and again notice that aquarius is the 11th sign so we see this gateway or this doorway that you must go through.
Now we do seem to continue to have some challenges for some of you going through the month of September. There's still this lack of practicality. Some of you still, you're doing the Aquarius part, you're changing your mind, but a lot of you are still not doing the necessary work. And even the moon is here. A lot of you still aren't changing your feelings. Mercury's here. A lot of you still aren't changing your mindsets. Pluto is here. A lot of you still aren't going through that death, releasing the old, transforming. And it leads you to air. It leads you to a feeling of being free. Now, in a way, this is false freedom, though. That you are escaping or running. The answer is true freedom. And actually putting yourself in a position that serves or benefits you. So a lot of you have some change, some work to do. And for a lot of you, I would use August to do that work because August is a very light and easy month. And it opens a portal, a doorway for you to live in your truth and to truly be happy. So August is the perfect month to do this work on yourself. So that was your August 2019 horoscope for the sign of Gemini. Also your sneak peek at September 2019. Let me know if this resonated with you or helped you in any way. I hope you enjoy this. If you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. And I hope you all have a great day.